this is, this is, this is. Hey, Susie Moon, thank you for being on, and thank you for that vinyl package, by the way. That was an insane stack of records, so thank you. Yay, thanks, Mike. I'm so stoked to be here and chat with you, and props to Pirates Press Records, too, for putting together this awesome bundle, and I wrote them and said, you got to get something out to Mike. He's been so cool to us, and they're like, yes, we're going to put it in the mail right away, and I just love that, like, in our little scene, everybody looks out for each other, helps each other, and like you know, you're spreading the love through the through the music and the message and all that good stuff. And you did a killer unboxing video, so thank you for that. Oh yeah, of course, of course. It's fun. It's fun to to get packages where you don't exactly know what it's gonna be. But speaking about Pirates Press, though, they've been really cool over the years. Um, we've worked with them here and there, and and just lately they've been amazing. So like just consistency, you know, and mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. And a lot of the bands that I meet that work with Pirates Press are, are very cool people too. So I don't know. Yeah. I yeah. I love the Drowns. I'm a big fan of the Drowns. Um, I've been talking with those guys a little bit, like dropping, dropping the nuggets of, you know, when are we going to tour together? Right. How fun would that be? <laughs> and I love the new charger record. And what's cool about Pirates Press Records is that they, you know, they, they're not really sticking to one thing. They're finding these bands that, you know, they, they excel in their one thing that they do and then they let it shine. So it's a very versatile record label. Um, you know, my stuff is a little bit more kind of like classic punk rock and roll, you know, and um, I feel right at home next to the slackers, you know, because it's like everybody's just doing their art the best that they can. And it's celebrated and encouraged. Yeah, that's cool. That it, it's it's doesn't always work out like that. So I'm glad that mm. that you do feel at home there. That's cool. That's good. Yeah, to hear. it's really good to hear. It's encouraging. Um, yeah, you know. Well, Pirates, they're like for the artist. You yeah, know? <laughs> yeah. You know you what know, a concept. <laughs> everybody says they're for the artist, but I know they don't usually actually. You know do the things that, that seem to be for the artists. I was, you know, it's it funny, like, you know, it's like a lot of people wonder why politics don't work for the common person. And it's because it's usually because mm -hmm. people are just in it for themselves. People are special interest groups take over, you know, the government and all that. And I think that happens in music too. You know, people just, they get, they get so tunnel vision on what they want. They forget about what the big picture is, which is punk rock, especially not just, yeah, generally, but punk rock, especially, you know, it's a community and yeah, the divisiveness. I didn't think I didn't think it would be in punk rock, you know, and, and, it, and it is. But luckily, it is. Yeah, like, I got to say props again to Pirates Press. They aren't they aren't guilty of that. Sure. Yeah. And it's like, you know, we've definitely had conversations. I've had conversations. I'm sure you've had conversations with plenty of labels over the years, you know, just kind of getting a feel for people who you might want to work with. And, you know, when I spoke of Pirates Press Records, it was like, wait a minute, you want me to do well? Like, <laughs> And it's it's not like your your pocketbook first. It's like this um, collaboration thing, you know, and so with what they've put on the table for me, you know, I'm really trying to match that and work as hard, harder even, you know, to make it worth their time for taking on my band and my project, you know? And so they've just been really easy to communicate with and, uh, they're down for all of my crazy fucking ideas and uh, like they're all on board, you know? So, um, that's like every band's dream is to have you know, your champions behind you. Yeah. So speaking of dreams, like, what, did you grow up as a little girl, like in front of the mirror singing? Like, what was your rise to, how did you get into punk rock? How did you find punk rock and finally get signed? Yeah, dude. Um, I was definitely that little girl. There are VHS tapes of me with a hairbrush singing along to Britney Spears. Like they're out there for sure. My mom's basement. Um, yeah, I, I've always been a performer. And just the kid that needs to get a lot of attention or make people laugh. Like, um, I would put on little talent shows at school, um, and I wanted to act. So the first thing I wanted to do was be an actress, like from the time I was really, really little. And my mom got my sister and I an agent and I've got these memories of driving into downtown LA, you know, with my hair and makeup all done, shooting photos on like rooftops, you know, 
and I've just had this like bug in me to, you know, perform since I was really little, but acting didn't pan out because, uh, I was a early self sabotager (laughs) and (laughs) just right from the get go, if there was a way I could like destroy my own, um, my own uh, path to success, I was going to be the one to do it. Like um, getting so, oh man, like I would, I would have meltdowns on, on set, like when we'd be doing auditions and stuff over really little things. And in my head, I was like, I've got this, this is meant for me, you know, but then I'd eat an entire packet of bubble gum in the backseat and throw up over my mom's car because the nerves, you know, like I can, I can definitely like see that now that that's what it was. Like I was so afraid of actually getting what I wanted that I, I, I put blocks in front of myself, you know? Yeah. Um, and I really respect actors, but that, that's not for me. Um, you have to be so vanilla and plain and basic, you know, to fit into these characters. And I always felt like the weirdest girl in the audition room, you know, like there was something different about me and all those girls look the same. And I felt really, really different. Um, but I've definitely taken some of that. Um, you know, you learn how to carry yourself and speak to people, you know, and like use your voice and project it, um, be very emotive with your hands and all that stuff. So I really feel like I've, I've applied that to rock and roll where I get to be my own character and nobody can tell me, you know, what, what, you know, I make the plot and, um, you know, I exist in this little universe where I make sense, you know, and, um, it's, nobody's telling me how to do it basically. So they're kind of, it's similar art forms, you know, but rock and roll is way more fun. Yeah, I mean, the the structure involved with acting has got to be so intense. You know, I've only done this much. You've probably done much more, like, maybe, like, having to remember some lines or reading lines. I've never really done that. And But mm-hmm. just, just what everybody knows about acting, you know, just the hours of waiting, the hours of, yeah, sure, musicians got to wait, and we can talk about that, too. But that's the structure, though, right? Like, some people need structure. Some people are good at that. Oh, yeah. Others, not so much. So feel like you're you're a not so much you found your calling so how did no. you how did you find music then so you, you self-sabotaged i'd rather write my own script right yeah exactly right tell your own that's story. what our lyrics are okay. yeah yeah totally um my my big sister had an all-girl punk band in high school called civet and i grew up in long beach california and there were there were a lot of really great bands you know there long beach has always been a very musical city and uh, culturally very interesting, you know, like I feel so grateful to have grown up there. We'd be at the beach every day after school. And then she'd take me to backyard shows and throw me in the pit, you know, really early on, like I was like 12, 13. And then when I turned 15, she said, you know, I think you should join the band with me Uh, because I'd gone to all the shows. I'd seen, you know, everything she was doing, but I was like, Liza, I don't know how to play guitar. You know, she's like, well, here's my guitar. She like bestowed it upon me. And, um, I started playing guitar, but I sucked so bad, Mike. I was like the worst and I, I wasn't feeling it at all. You know, there was like no magical connection. And I, I had been writing lyrics and songs for a long time. Like I still got like these notebooks, um, always just writing little like songs and like ditties in my head. But the guitar thing was really hard for me. And what age and then you, I realized when you started guitar? About 14, 14 and a half, you know, okay. so um, just feeling really uncomfortable with it. But then I realized that when I like didn't have the guitar on it and I was air guitaring to a song on the radio, I was playing it left handed because I'm left handed. And she had given me her right handed guitar, you know? Yeah. And I was like, dude, can I play it the other way? <laughs> Is that a thing? You know? And she's like, oh, yeah, I guess that kind of makes sense, right? And I'm like, dude, do whatever you have to do. Like, let's try. Because I was like, wait a minute, this feels right. This feels wrong, (laughs) you know? Um, So she just, she strung the guitar upside down for me and did all that. And um, I didn't suck as bad as I did, like, the week before. And it felt, it felt good, you know? I was like, oh, I can actually get it get it, the hang of this thing. And, um, that was kind of like the beginning really when 
it just uh, it clicked for me, and I sucked for a long time because I think everybody sucks. <laughs> at the yeah. beginning, like you have to get through that, like, and then one day you wake up and you're like not the worst guitar player ever. Like all of a sudden, you like you kind of got the hang of it, like with any skill or whatever. Um, That's an amazing yeah, story and, that you started playing, and you were left. You are you left-handed, or mm-hmm. you, you are actually left-handed, and you didn't know. Oh yeah, there's left and right-handed guitars. <laughs> I was too little; like it didn't yeah. even register, you know. Yeah, absolutely, and, and it's weird. Yeah, that, it's weird that even though you're left-handed or right-handed, it seems like a new skill, like playing guitar. Why? Why is it easier one way or another when it's a new thing? Like mm-hmm. playing these chords with your right or left hand shouldn't technically matter if it's something right. brand new that you're doing. Yeah, if like you're going to keep doing it over and over again until your brain accepts it, you know, but no, I have thing. to play it. Yeah, I have to play it that way. I I feel like really icky if I even put my hands the other direction. It's like, nope, that's not right. It's so, um, and and I'm, I'm just thinking about the logic involved with, okay, well, if you're right-handed, maybe it, it should be easier to do the chords with your right hand. And, and then if you're mm-hmm. left-handed, it should be easier to do with, with your left hand. But it's opposite that. Yeah, it's 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 pretty freaking weird. Brains are crazy. (laughs) They are. They are. Yeah, and then I'm just I'm just totally a left-handed person anyway. You know, like you you hear that you know left-handed people are a certain way, right-handed people are are another way, and I just think that it's um it's it's helped me. You know, with the way that I write songs, and I've talked to other musicians. Um, For example, our guitar player Drew who plays lead guitar in my band, you know, he's the kind of guitar player that is very regimented and likes to sit down and practice for hours and hours and hours and hours. And I literally only want to touch my guitar when I'm going on stage or if I have to use it as a tool to write a song, you know, like I just don't have that like desire to like master my instrument, you know? So there's like, there's musicians that like, love doing that stuff, you know, and other ones who just kind of use it as like a very simple tool to get like the, the, you know, the full thing finished. Like if I've got a song, I'll, you know, I'll sit there and I'll be like, okay, so that sounds like that. And that sounds like that. And then put it away for a while, work on lyrics, but I'm just not the like pick up my guitar and jam to, you know, relieve stress from a long day kind of person, you know, it's, I think it's more of the full, package and the full vision of what the guitar allows me to do is why I love it. You know, and I love my guitar, but I'm just like, I don't want to fucking play it unless I have to. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I get that. I mean, I kind of, I'm kind of in between all that, you know, because I use my guitar for, actually, I wanted to ask you about songwriting. Maybe we talk about it now, but um, I use my guitar for songwriting mainly. And then I use my mm-hmm. bass for MXPX and, and, yeah, and the you know singing or whatever. I don't really sing by myself too much, but but the overall package, what you're saying, I mean, that is a very that's a very you're a lot like me, you know, where okay, I'm always trying to like move the whole the whole field, not just the ball, you know. Sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, it's so, a big picture. Yeah. 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 So I think that's that. There's nothing wrong with with that, you know, at, at some mm-hmm. point you realize, well, I'm not going to be the best tennis player. doesn't mean I shouldn't ever play tennis, Sure. but, but the amount of time I'm going to spend playing tennis is probably not as much as, uh, well, if I was going to be the best tennis player in the world, <laughs> I'm not playing enough for that. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Up. But it, it could but be, but do with- I like to go to the court and have a good time? I don't know. You know, it's like, everybody's got their little way of doing things and writing songs on bass is so different than writing songs on guitar. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, I've got a song, I'm not a man that was on our first EP call the shots. And I wrote that, that song probably wouldn't have come about if I wasn't screwing around on my bass, you know, cause it was like that, like deep, like do, 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 you know? So that's good for me to unlock different parts of my brain Mm -hmm. when it comes to songwriting, you know, um, so every once in a while I'll sit down with my bass and it's so cool how you like feel it in your chest. And I'm not, I'm not a bass player first, you know, I'm a, I'm a guitar songwriter, but it's really cool how like just hearing the different instrument, uh, and feeling it, you know, can unlock new pathways. Yeah, absolutely. To... <laughs> I love that stuff. Yeah. So the, uh, I wanted to ask you about you know, songs in relation mm-hmm. to the big picture. Do you feel like, 
do you feel like maybe they're just part of a tool like a guitar or do they mean i mean maybe naturally they, they mean a little bit more to you than a than a vacant instrument could but, but uh <laughs> although the, the instrument is a conduit but um yeah what, what's your song you know how do you view songs in the big picture i consider myself a songwriter first and foremost like that is my craft that i i am a songwriter i have been since i was a kid um my <laughs> I was obsessed with Sugar Colt, right? A Sugar Colt CD home. Okay. And I had this imaginary. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love Sugar Me too. Um, oh, no. You're Sorry, breaking I pulled up on my headphones. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dude. No, I I dropped the phone forward. Um, so Sugar Colt, their, their first record, Start Static, has this awesome song called Daddy's Little Defects, right? And I had this imaginary girl band at school before I even started playing guitar called daddy's little defects and i always had imaginary bands even before my sister brought me in to her band like i was a rock star in my head you know and i wanted to like do this thing you know um so i'd write songs and very early on it's like there was something about like you know piecing together stuff and making it as catchy as possible like i'm always chasing like that that hook and it's something I've I'm still working towards like it's such an amazing thing like the songwriting thing like um, I'm a big fan of Tom Petty because he's just that universal you know relatable um, Smokey Robinson too like those mm -hmm. boys like just are you kidding me um, yeah, and I really strive that's where I put in work is to be a better songwriter all the time and um, for a long time, it was very autobiographical stuff, you know, and I think a lot of people do that early on because it's that that purging of feelings and, you know, teenage angst and all that stuff. But I now, you know, instead of trying to fit into like this this box of like, oh, she's Susie Moon, she's this punk rocker and punk rock sounds like this, you know, um, I've really tried to just say, fuck all of that. And I'm going to write great songs and then I'm going to play them my way. And then they will be punk rock, you know, Yeah. because that's, that's who I am, you know? And so I've got this, um, and I really think we did a little bit of that on call the shots and the animal EP, because even though it's only, you know, three songs here, three songs there, there's a decent amount of range within that, that, uh, was a good, um, introduction to people who are uh, seeing me for the first time as a solo artist, you know, um, that I'm capable of doing more than just one thing, like not a one trick pony. I don't want to be seen as that. Um, and then I've got this full length coming out that that's the one that will really show everybody that I've got, I've got a little bit more up my sleeve, you know, than just, um, crazy girl on stage rolling around like those are gimmicks and um you know um people love it something i've talked about with my bandmates people love it and i love it too but it's got to be authentic like yes. you can't go on and force yourself to do something like that every night like i would die all right um, i would just leave on stage. All right, yeah. <laughs> right yeah you're really feeling it this time aren't you i can tell you know <laughs> And um, sorry, I kind of got off there about songwriting, but it's a, it, that's, that's the journey that I'm on is to, I want to leave great songs behind me. And, you know, there, there are so many people that I look up to in music who, and it's, it goes always back to the song, you know? Um, so yeah, um, I just, I take what comes to me and I really don't believe that they belong to me at all. Right. Like, um, I'm just a vessel, I'm a channel, you know, it could either be me or, you know, this motherfucker over here who happened to sit down with his guitar at that time. You know, you, have you ever had a song just drop into your head, you know? Yeah, of like course, the, of course, yeah. Is, is, isn't that weird? It is weird. I, you know, you <laughs> like, you, you're like, how did I write some, usually it's like when it's a really good idea, you're like, how did yeah. I write something that good? Yeah. Yeah. We're not that good, Mike. No, no, you're right. You're right. <laughs> it's not <laughs> us, dude. It's not fucking possible. <laughs> like So you believe in like the, the muse and like maybe I the idea that like there's like 
ideas floating in the ether. Yes. And melodies. And yes. Words and, and yeah. And, and it could have been, could have been you, me or Otis Redding, man. Like how do you tap right time? That? How do you, when do you best tap into like your, your ideas? Like, cause they maybe seemingly come randomly, but mm -hmm. maybe they come mm -hmm. more when you're just chilling, like not overcrowding your mind. I don't know. Yeah. Um, actually when I'm, I'm running, okay. I get good ideas. Yeah. Um, I how, think how it has something run? to do with not often enough. <laughs> you should be running every day with that. Like, I know, new idea, I know. Pop, I know. Yeah. I, um, maybe, maybe it's the air going through my nose and out my ear, uh, whatever, like kind of flow is happening, you know, like through my brain, it feels very much like, I, I, like it's moving through me, you know? I'm not a doctor, but I think, you know, I do run as well. And, mm -hmm. um, and like you, I don't run enough. Like I get in spurts where I'm running a lot and then something yeah. will happen and I won't run for a while or whatever, you know, but, um, I get ideas too. So I, yeah. I think there's something yeah. to the fact that you're outside your normal, like day to day mm -hmm. activity and you're, even though it is a normal day to day activity, but you're just your your body is doing the same thing over and over. And yeah, the repetitive rhythm. thing. So then, and it's working. So mm -hmm. it's like all your thoughts start going somewhere, right? Yeah, are and you, you can kind of like anything while what? you're running. Or are you just just running with no music, no podcast? I yeah, I don't really listen to a lot of stuff ever unless it's on my record player. All I kind of go back. Um, when we're driving in the van, like definitely I have my driving music, but when I'm driving at home, silence, like, um, and when I'm at the gym, silence, <laughs> like, wow. yeah, I just, I, um, I, it's, there's already so much music in my brain, mm -hmm. you know, um, for a long tour drive, I got other people in the van, you got to entertain people. So it's like, have you guys listened to this record? You know, this is my favorite against me record. We're going to listen to it 10 times. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but by myself, I really need like the peace and quiet. Yeah. Um, I, also, I like yeah. to work on lyrics when I'm running, you know, right. Cause you can just go over them and over them and over them and over them and just throw shit out and be like, Oh, that sucks. That's great. Whatever. Working on this, working on that, you know? Interesting. Yeah. I've done like, I would work on speeches, um, like try to nice. talk, say my, you know, in my head, do my speech mm -hmm. while I'm running. Um, that's been a while, but um, what I use running for these days is editing. So like I'll have a song oh. that I've been working on, and I just, you know, I know it's not right. I, do you ever have it like you're like, okay, I have a really good part. I've got this mm -hmm. other part that's not as good, and I know it has to like come up to par. And I'm not yeah. sure how it's all going to fit together. And so like, I'll have these ideas and, and I'll, I'll listen to them over and over while I'm running yeah. um, or at least a few times and then I'll shut it off and I'll just be thinking about how I'm going to change the, the sure. sequence of the parts. Maybe I'll, uh, sometimes I'll come up with like a new part. Like I'll, I'll think of the part I like and then I'll try to think of something na that naturally goes into the next part, you know, whether it's like a melody or a, you know, a vibe or whatever, but it's like you're throwing, that. throwing the spaghetti at the wall in your brain, Yeah, exactly. you know, but like all of these, like all of those, uh, sensors and everything's like working, you know? So it's like, you can kind of just throw shit around. And for some reason, I, I've gotten pretty good at like remembering things I come up with on runs too. Like I, always we have our phones with us, you know, and we'll make our little recordings and all that stuff. But yeah, there's like no one to judge. And there's like this weird like free kind of atmosphere around you while you're doing that. And it's just, it's a very creatively potent time. I feel. Yeah. Yeah. And for those that don't run, if you can walk, you know, even walking, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I always tell, I, you know, people, people always tell me, but I always tell other people as well. <laughs> if you're in a bad mood or if you just can't figure something out, just take a walk, you know, get outside. You know, and, and for leave a, your immediate space. <laughs> exactly. And I think running yeah. is that running is that mm -hmm. it's just more intense. It's better, probably better for you. But, yeah. Um, I have shitty knees though. So I, I don't, I have to be careful with how much I run. Mm -hmm. I've just done a number on them over the years. And like on my mom's side of the family, like all the women have had knee surgery. So that's a great, great to know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Uh, we just have bad fucking yeah. knees in my family and I love to run, but I will 
I have to be like really careful. So a lot of times I, that shit. Oh, I got to stop dropping to my knees like a crazy person on stage. Because, you know, start wearing knee but pads. Like, dude, it's not my look. <laughs> it's not like I was, <laughs> it's not my look. I've thought about it. Cyberpunk. It, yeah, totally. That's like another band, another yeah. era or something. I yeah. Hear I hear you. Um, so we, but um, I have – yeah, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Well, you got good questions and things. Well, I was going to say, you know, we've been talking a lot about like the big picture, but I wanted mm-hmm. to know you're on tour right now. You have dates. This is going to come out uh, the 20, May 2nd. It's going to come cool. out May 2nd. So that's that's a Monday. You guys have days off typically Mondays. But yes. you're know, still heading out to um, – what, we like, got a lot uh, of dates ahead of Salt us. Salt Lake City, Las Vegas, Reno, San Francisco. That's that week. Into Los yep. Angeles. And yep. yeah, I mean, what is – my question is, and I did have one, uh, what's like your <laughs> typical day-to-day? Because it's kind of the same for everybody, which is cool, and it's – you know, there's always weird things. So Yeah. <laughs> no oh, yeah, for sure. how mundane you think it is, I'd love to know, like, what's a typical, like, day on tour for you guys? Yeah. Well, and every tour is different too. And you, mm-hmm. you would know this cause it's the van versus the bus versus, you know, how many, how long are the drives and stuff on this particular tour. And the last one we just did with teenage bottle rocket too. Um, I'm oddly finding myself not needing caffeine. I don't know what's mm. going on. <sighs> yeah. Why? Like I wake up, I don't want coffee. I don't want it. Like it sounds like the most disgusting thing in the world. And I'm a coffee drinker and you're not tired, but, um, no, I have like so much energy and I should be tired. Like wow. science mm. would tell us that I should be cracking right about now. Yeah. You, you know? Think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so maybe it's just a, this is just a magical tour, but I am a, I'm a sleepy person in general. I like to get my 10 hours if possible at home. Um, I really, you know, I, I sleep a lot and, um, especially when we're singing too, that's like, it's like the only time our voices can rest, you know, because you have to talk to everybody in the van and then you have to talk to everybody at the venue and then you sing and then you have to talk to everybody that came to your show. And I want to talk to all these people, but my voice is tired, mm-hmm. you know? Absolutely. So like the, the sleep thing is like the most important. So basically wherever we're at, we'll wake up. I make, um, I've started bringing all my stuff on tour. I drink this at home every night, but now I'm drinking it in the mornings on tour. It's uh, hot water, lemon juice, apple cider vinegar, raw organic honey. There's ginger in here a full squeezed orange, a packet of emergency, cinnamon, cayenne pepper, black pepper. And that's like Mm. my live forever um, tonic. And it's delicious at the bottom in the morning. morning. So that's why you don't need Um, coffee. Yeah, probably. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I haven't been able to get to it every day because sometimes you, you don't have time to pop into the good gas station with the hot water and the space to cut your ginger like an asshole, you know, like, um, you don't, sometimes you just don't have time to even do the things, the little things that you need to do to take care of yourself, you know, or we're just in such a rush or running behind. Um, the, the boys, they like bang energy drink. That's kind of like the vibe in the van is a lot of the bang. Have you had those? Uh, no, dude, they're crazy. They have like a hundred flavors, like swirly pop, rainbow I, unicorn. I think I'm glad I quit. Butthole. <laughs> I, I pretty much quit drinking caffeine. A couple yeah, years ago. yeah. Uh, like three years ago, I think now. Uh, mainly just because I I had a a, a kidney stone. Oh, and, ouch! And I was drinking rock stars every day. And yeah, I was like, that's got to be yeah. it. You know, like I'm just cut that out. I've been good. Oh, totally. But yeah, but I had it that's was the- funny. I, funny little tiny story and then we'll we'll get back to you sorry uh, no you're good i want to hear this i was it's not even worth telling to be honest no, <laughs> but i was like i was talking to a friend of mine uh we he, he was like let's go get tacos and, and this guy mm-hmm. that i don't know super well like i'm kind of getting to know him here in texas but uh sure i went out had some tacos and i'm like yeah i don't i don't drink caffeine and i ordered an unsweetened iced uh, iced tea oh, and then yeah. later on i realized 
I, way after we were done, I was like, oh, wait, I had caffeine in it. <laughs> looking at me like I'm a total dumbass or a, a, a liar or, you know, like. Right. So anyway, Bro, you don't have to lie about it. Yeah, exactly. So I'm not technically like, you know, sober, no caffeine guy. Sure, I just sure. don't try to drink caffeine. Like You know, everybody slips up from time to time, dude. It's okay. Admitting it is the first step. All right. I, I need a sponsor. I need a sponsor. Yeah, yeah. Um. <laughs> That's so, so anyway, funny. Yeah, he probably Jason. was looking at you. Yeah, like a little side eyed. But that's weird. You know, it's got caffeine in it, right? Yeah. yeah. Um. Well, you know, like um, many other women in music, I've gotten really good at putting my makeup on in the van. Mm -hmm. In fact, I feel like my makeup looks the best when I do it in the van now because a lot of times these clubs, they just have, and it's n nothing against the clubs, man. Every club's different, but shitty lighting mm -hmm. if there's even a mirror for me to do my makeup at all you know um and space to get dressed and do you know what i need to do um so yeah uh, the van is like backstage basically at this point um so do a little of that get to the venue um i have just an amazing band my guys are so cool and so supportive and they they respect me in a way to where like they'll be like look we don't want you doing too too much because you do all this other stuff that's really important that we can't do like you have to handle so much Susie Moon shit we're gonna you know everyone's got their job to like be the one that packs the van at the end of the night like everyone helps each other but like you know there's the packer and like check in with the venue stuff and like they've like taken a lot of like because I'm a control freak. I would do all of the, I would try to do every single one of these fucking things, you know, and just like run myself into the ground. And they're like, no, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that, that you put on your makeup in the back seat. So when you go in, you look like Susie Moon, you know, and you feel good, you know? And like, um, I feel so lucky to just have a group that operates like that, where, um, they're just like no big ego. And it's like, what's the, for the greater good, of the band and it really does take a lot of pressure off of me to just be everywhere at once and basically have zero time for myself to recharge before we go out there and put on the show you know so like i'm so lucky there's the best they're yeah, the best guys in the whole world i mean i was just thinking about how rare it is to like really find a band that'll stick with you that'll not only play great you guys because you guys are amazing live but, Thank you. But just have somebody taking responsibility for different things that need yeah. to be done. And there's constant things. And most bands get really complacent. They get comfortable. They get mm -hmm. used to, you know, the tour manager handling everything. They yeah. ask dumb questions to the tour manager. I'm guilty of it myself plenty of times. Like, you know. Same. <laughs> all us musicians, you know, that, that grew up touring and, and, you know, a lot of us just have stunted growth in some areas in life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Dealing with certain things ourselves. Uh -huh. like, where's the TM? Like, <laughs> where's my per diem? You know, like, yeah, man. <laughs> you know, it's a harsh What's reality. the Wi-Fi code? Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. I mean, the fact that nowadays it's different. you got to – I mean, people take it a little more seriously, even though it's – really fun like you said it's more fun than acting rock and roll is yeah really more fun but there are responsibilities so mm -hmm. what what's the first thing you do once you after you get your makeup done and you, you walk into the venue and just check it out what do you what, what's your tip yeah well the guys will have by this point you know basically set up our stuff on stage uh right now we're touring with ravages our friends from baltimore we're doing a bit of a gear share to help out with the van situation you know so We'll get our stuff up there, and if they're not there yet, you know, hang out. I always want to sound check. Every band wants to sound check. I think almost. we've gotten well, almost. We've gotten um, two sound checks so far on this tour. Wow. So okay. you're not always gonna get it, you know, yeah. and uh, you you allow time to load in and be at the venue in time for sound check. But you still don't always get a sound check, you know. So that's the hurry up and wait that you know you know so much about, you know. Oh, yeah. When you're basically just hanging out, snacking on stuff, maybe writing back some, you know, responding some emails, um, 
we brought someone out who is a photographer helping out with merch and, you know, trading some driving duties. So that's another thing that's off my plate. You know, like I would be the person usually is like, oh, I'm going to make sure little merch is a little perfect. You know, and it's like, oh, I don't have to do that. Does literally nobody need me right now? This is great. I'm going to go lay down somewhere and just rest for a minute, you know? Um, So that is um, like just kind of foreign and new to me at this stage because you, you do, when you're a smaller band, you have to do so much stuff yourself and I, I'm getting better at delegating things and it's making everything run smoother. And I'm just really grateful that I have, People who, you know, don't have these big old egos and are like, oh, man, I'm not going to touch that. You know, it's like, no, like and then in turn, we all help each other, you know, so the whole thing flows Mm -hmm. really, really well. And I think people do best when they've got responsibilities, you know, makes them feel like they're invested, you know, and they're not just like a hired, you know, whatever, like doesn't matter if they're there or not. It's like, you you know, everybody does. They got to do your part. And then we uh, we just operate better that way. That's that's a huge huge key to success right there. I've heard a lot of horror stories about like a, a solo artist has a band and the band has questions and mm-hmm. the solo artist says, "Well, ask the manager." And like they ask the manager, yeah. and then they're like, "Well, you shouldn't be asking questions." And like it's like that's just that's no way to keep a band. Like mm-hmm. you want to have people that care to be there. That you know. So, I mean, you got the, the situation you got going on. seems to be pretty good. Like, is this the first time you've had this many people? Like, you've had a, a merch person and, and things like that? or? Well, with this band, certainly. Yeah. Um, with the, you know, with the band I was in with my sister, Savette, when I was, what, 16 to, like, 22. I mean, we were on Hellcat Records. We did a lot of touring and... We even, there was one time we were so luxurious, we had a sound guy. (laughs) Like, (laughs) how cool is that? What a concept to have someone who, like, gives a shit about your sound every night, you know? Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) And we've met lovely sound guys over the years. Like, nothing against sound guys. They have a hard fucking job, and they have to hear, they have to hear all that, so much music every single night, you know? Like, I can't imagine um, doing that. Um, but yeah, merch guy, driver, you know, the, the crew and stuff, but I didn't have a lot of responsibilities in general in Civet because I was so young. Mm-hmm. I was really just kind of, I think there to reinforce my sister's final word, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like <laughs> she's like, well, Susie agrees with me. And I'm like, yeah, that's right. That's my sister, man. So <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I'm like, I see this now. I, I know, I know what you're doing. Um, but yeah, I just didn't have, um, I wasn't a big decision maker. I wasn't really involved in any of the financial or business side of stuff. I wrote songs with my sister, which was awesome. I really liked playing music with her. And mm-hmm. I still think that she's just one of the greatest lyricists, lyricists that I've ever worked with. Like, I love the way that she she writes. I like the her style of poetry, you know. But how did you learn? She, uh, hmm. I, I just want to know how did you learn the business part? Uh, you know, um, just by watching people. Was there any one person that you kind of like credit for? Because you're really good, just you know, at what you do. So thank you. Uh, maybe it's just some people have a knack for things, you yeah. know. Um, so you just kind of do it naturally a little bit, like. I've definitely made mistakes and learned from them. Yep, <laughs> you know, course, yeah. you're, you're good. You're going to make stupid fucking mistakes. Um, but you know, fortune favors the bold. And I've, I am, I consider myself to be something of a calculated risk taker as well. And, you know, I, I absorbed a lot when I was in Civet, just kind of seeing, you know, what was going on around me. Um, but it's, it must be something in, instinctively inside of me because I haven't read books on the business side of things. Um, numbers freak me the fuck out. I did not get into rock and roll to look at numbers, like keep it away from me. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't give a shit. Like, um, I just, 
you know, there, there are certain things to do that I think work. Yeah. And, you know, actually it's something I've thought about, like, you know, I'd like to actually teach, um, teach people how to be in a decent band. <laughs> like, I'm not saying I'm like this hugely successful person or anything, but like, I think there are ways to go about things and I do have some insight and I want other bands to know all of the things yeah. because, you know, and that doesn't mean they're going to do them and it's going to work for them, but uh, knowledge is good. And, um, you know, every time I meet bands on the road and they have questions for me, like I always tell them, like, just send me a message. Like I will, I will tell you everything I know, you know, and mm-hmm. you know, you just have friends all the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cause it's good. And when there are great bands out there, maybe nobody ever told them like, don't do that, you know, do this instead. And here's why, you know, um, you know, I just want to see good bands succeed and, uh, makes our whole scene better, you know? Um, and a lot of it's experience. I've just had a lot of fucking experience, you know, but there are definitely been times when I sent an off colored email to a very important person. And then I was shunned for a long time, you know, and it's like, ouch, that hurts. I did that to myself, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Damn. Yeah, but you know, you're right. You know, that, that was a thing, bitchy email. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, there's without knowing really the thing. Like a lot of times, you can't get anybody's attention without being super negative or super mean or calling people out or, or even when you have to defend yourself. That yeah, not, you know, nobody will listen unless you're like, hey, you know, like, hey, asshole or whatever it is. But. Uh, yeah well that's another thing like standing up for yourself too Mm -hmm. to be heard you know there are so many bands like how do you set yourself apart and not be like walked over you know Mm society is so ridiculous i always come back to like the simulation thing like do you think we're living Mm. in a simulation because it it sure seems like it sometimes (laughs) literally like Birds aren't real, right? Oh, right. <laughs> like, you know this, this bird thing? Birds, birds yeah, my like brother showed me that. <laughs> That's a little far-fetched, but... Still. You know, anything's possible, man. Anything's I don't possible. fucking know what's going on, dude. I'm just here. So why not be a rock star? Well, you've heard about like mosquitoes, like um, little tiny drone mosquitoes that they're... Oh, shit. That, they're, like, that are real. Uh-huh. And, and they're like releasing a swarm of them in like a town to like test these. That's should, my worst I should, nightmare. I should look this up probably. Like, I wish I, I don't like, Googler. I don't like that at all. Dude. <laughs> I don't like it at all either. No, uh, no. Yeah. I don't know, man. Um, life is weird. The sky is weird. Like the fact that we're here and having this conversation right now is weird. Like, you know, what, what is it all for? I just, um, I just try to be happy and be nice to people and we're going to die. So that's the thing, you know, it's like, yeah. what, what can you do? What can you do while you're alive? That makes you like proud and, um, happy. And I've always told my, you know, my higher power, because I'm, I'm very spiritual, you know, every night before I go on stage, I pray for my voice to be confident, to use my hands, to be a good performer. Like, let me do the job that I was put here to do. These talents, what I have is it's a gift. You know, it's, it's, it doesn't actually belong to me. I'm just this one person who was told to do this thing. You know, I just go where I'm guided to go. And, um, if I can just, um, do my best while I'm here, and hopefully make some people happy and ha- bring on the experiences, you know, like I'm down for the ride. I've always been down for a wild ride um, because it's a, it's a short time that we get to be here. And every time I think I've I've got a plan, the universe throws a fucking awesome curveball at me, you know, or whatever. And it's like, oh, yeah, awesome. I don't I don't know shit. There's some other plan, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I you know, I can't I can't project it. Sometimes I got an, a pretty good instinct or an inkling of like what might be coming, you know, but I've been surprised by things I could have never imagined. Yeah. And that's like so beautiful and cool and nothing, nothing actually makes any fucking sense. Like, yeah. <laughs> like I wonder, I wonder if like the mindfulness and the, like you're saying you praying and setting your intentions before going on stage, like mm-hmm. athletes do that, you know, they mentally kind of go over 
you know, I'm going to score that goal. I'm going to make that basket. I mean, maybe that's really the key to success is, is being mindful of your body, of your mind, of your heart, of everything, you know, that you're about to go do and being grateful mm -hmm. for the, the opportunity to go do it. You know, like, like something we do, we get all huddle up with Goldfinger and, and, oh, yeah. and, uh, Feldy says, you know, you know, he's very similar to, to you, you know, spiritual. Uh -huh. And, and, and so like, it's, maybe it's just the, the, the act of making sure your mind focuses for just a second on mm -hmm. what you're about to do rather than some people are crazy and they put on great shows and they're, they're wild and drunk and partying, playing like Post Malone, you know, <laughs> he, he, you know, uh, was hanging out at his Posty Fest backstage and, and he was just playing ping pong or beer pong the whole time, you know, like, hey, yeah, pong, yeah, pong, the whole time up until he went to go play wow. the show. And, and I was just like, oh, wow, I can't do that. Like, I need to warm up, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, but yeah, or just get in the the right headspace yeah you know and i think he probably does that recognize for, yeah i think he does that for a minute but like i need more than a mm -hmm. minute i need physically and mentally i need about an hour before a show yeah because i stretch yeah. out i try to like get my blood pumping and there's like timing i don't want to get too amped up too quickly you know oh, sure. too soon yeah. i mean because then you get yeah more down so i mean I, I don't know for me it's different it, but maybe so go ahead. Sorry. No, I'm just, I like, like you said, it's like this, um, you gotta like kind of strike this balance for how like you tap in mm -hmm. to that part of yourself that's able to do this extru like what an output, <laughs> you know, yeah. every single night, it takes a lot of your mental energy, your emotional energy, you know, like I I've had shows where I've played so hard. I went backstage and just started bawling. You know, like wow. just like such a because it felt so intense, you know, and and like, thank you, <laughs> like universe for like any time I ever get to have a show that that good. And I, I care so much about it, probably too much. Um, and, you know, I just I really want to do a good job and perform for people, you know, and give them a show that's like you know, worth seeing. Sometimes there's a little self-imposed like pressure there that maybe I don't need to put so much of that on myself, you know, and then I'll have a bad show because I'm too focused on, on actually performing instead of having fun with my friends mm -hmm. on stage. And it's like, wait, doesn't this all go back to the rehearsal room <laughs> where like everything, you know, you just have these great rehearsals sometimes where there's like zero pressure mm -hmm. and you're just with your band, you know, and you just sound so tight and locked in, you know, and it's like, if I, if I get too far out of my head and it's almost like I'm looking at myself, you know, that's when I'll have like my shitty shows because it takes you out of the moment, you know, and that's what something I'm always trying to get to is that like, it's like this place and like, I don't know, I don't know where it is or how how to get there really but it's a place that i like get to where it's just like it locks in for me you know and i'm like yes. in it now and you can't get me out of it you know like the train is fucking rolling and oh and it just God. feels like free like ah. yes <laughs> that reminds me of a book called i think it's called weave world by clive barker and oh cool and he talks about this fugue state that the character goes into and and of course the book goes on and he like has to save the world and stuff, but, but the, fugue Oh, I want to check this out. It's a really cool book. I, I read it forever ago, but, uh, yeah. the fugue state, that is something that's mm -hmm. really hard to explain. And you explained it pretty well. And I've been there because it's, it's, yeah. that is what makes music so, so transcendent. I think mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. as a player, perfect word as a, as an artist, you can't get there all the time. You can't, yeah. there's no formula to get to that fugue state, uh, live where the crowd and the, the band is vibing or the artist is vibing and the artist says things that they've never said before to the yeah. audience that connects to their, their uh -huh. brains and their hearts. And they go home going, what did I just see? And, <laughs> and then you're backstage crying. You know, yeah. so like, that's a fugue state that, 
you cannot formulate like there's no math problem that will fix that every single time. Yeah, there's no way. It's just sometimes yeah. you get there and sometimes mm-hmm. you don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think if you try to chase it, too, you're going to get let down. Um, mm-hmm. I, I found that that stuff happens for me when I'm in the most like relaxed, like low didn't put any pressure on myself like maybe it's the shittiest club where you're playing on the floor in the corner but all of a sudden everybody is kind of one you know and like there's just like this weird magic that happens and you know I wish I could bottle that shit we'd be really really rich if we could bottle that we shit would. Like, <laughs> let's keep working be like on bottling that <laughs> traveling like uh, oil like the snake oil like salesman like with the little cart yeah. yeah yeah so that's something I guess maybe I'm maybe I'm obsessed with that thing you know maybe you know I, I that thing is what I want maybe, so badly maybe it's an nft it's called like the energy in the room tonight and you buy it yeah I'm not saying <laughs> hey I like that, that. <laughs> dude we could yeah no we're gonna talk but yeah, not yeah. We, we can't say anymore <laughs> <laughs> See, NFTs are weird because people ask me about them, and not that I don't believe in them, I don't have any or anything, but uh-huh. it's just, it's one of those things where, because I know my fans, for the most part, don't have the the, the setup, it's going to mm-hmm. be one, one of those things where you would want to, you'd want to, like, promote that to a different audience completely, like, yeah. Which I don't know if we have me personally, and this this is mm-hmm. my personal thoughts on it. I've never really talked about it on the podcast, but mm-hmm. I feel like it would be really annoying as a fan of MXPX that has no idea what M- NFTs are, even if it's like I'm doing you a favor, bro. Yeah, it, it forces them to like, okay, now I got to get an open C, now I got to get a a wallet, and a you know I got to invest sure. in crypto now, basically because that's the only way to get an F- NFT. Um, you're making I'm them not work so hard. To make them work that hard. Uh huh. Like, uh-huh. Here's some vinyl. <laughs> you know that that's my speed Dude. right now. But but I do. Well, what we do is so attention. primal. Yeah. You know what we do is like really simple, basic, primal shit, and and it 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 hits people in a totally different place. Like I don't give a shit about NFTs. There are people who are really good at stuff like that. You know, and props to them. But you know. You think Keith Richards is sitting around being like, yeah, NFTs, mate. You know, like, (laughs) um, I think that music is so much more important than that. Um, And it's just that simplistic thing, you know, like, don't make it don't make it hard on people to join your party, you know, or to like your band or to listen to your thing, you know, Um, like and rock and roll is just so. It's just, it's the people's thing. You know, we feel it. And that's why you'll see little kids at shows just losing their shit. And they might not know how to like say what it is yet, you know, but like it reaches people deeply. And I I just want to keep it simple, stupid, you know, for pretty much everything I do, you know, so it can reach more people and be accessible to them. And no one feels left out, you know, because they don't have the new fucking thing. And, you know, we have to, have so many different apps and so many different like Mm -hmm. tools to run our business, which is, you know, our bands. And, um, you know, I don't want to subject anybody to that shit. (laughs) This will blow your mind. This will blow your mind. Well, I'm sure you know, but there's people out there that think the opposite. They're like, Nope. NFTs are way more important than music. Um, I don't even listen to music. Um, I don't even watch TV shows anymore. Like I just sit on my TikTok and buy and, shop for nfts you know like there's people like that and hey kudos to them. birds aren't real birds aren't real <laughs> exactly like, <laughs> it's just there's every kind of person out there like there's people that there is the yeah is flat still yeah 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 <sighs> there's so. there are a lot of different types of people out there but if we lost it all if everything just went away and it was just flattened and crushed and we had to start over mm-hmm. you better believe one of those fucking people is going to find a stick and a rock. And the first thing they're going to do to pass time is write a song. Yes. You know, absolutely. Because it all goes back to the beat. And like, that's what drives like humans and it connects us, you know? So 
The only time I'm randomly dancing it's forever. ever in my life is because music's playing that I really like, you know. <laughs> so. Uh-huh. Like Uptown Funk by Bruno Mars. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was a good hit. That was good. That was such a good song. I'm like, don't invite me to your wedding unless you're playing that song. Okay. All right. It's like, the, it's like, it's like note, the friends. wedding. Yeah. 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 But, you know, NFTs, man. Birds aren't real, man. Birds aren't real. Bird, is, <laughs> what is there something that you can think of that actually you think might be actually true, like birds not being real or the Earth being flat? I'll I'll, I'll start. Um, okay, you go first. I feel like there were, there. It's a possibility that people could have at some point lived under the Earth. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, like the uh... like. I no, I, I, I I'm following. Like yeah. If there was a, and I know that it is not possible to to dig a hole to China, you know, like I thought when I was a kid, like on the yeah. cartoons. But but there is a possibility that like in the past there was a civilization that was so futuristic that mm-hmm. they could actually figure out how to build cities underneath the earth, and then oh, it totally. just got covered up over time. You know, when the when the great asteroid came now there's yeah. some people that believe that it's possible that there's still people living under the earth like deep within the earth and that that's aliens, really creepy aliens go and visit them aliens being like humans before you know and then left and then the earth got destroyed you know by asteroids you know twelve thousand mm-hmm. years ago or whatever it was but so there's a lot of different theories and i'm not saying i believe any one of those but is there <laughs> I love conspiracies. I will I will read all about this stuff and be like, you know what? It's fucking possible. It's possible. <laughs> right? we, we keep learning things that we thought were impossible. So that we keep learning that they're they're possible. So it's like, yeah, I guess it is possible. I mean, we've got really amazing technology, but that, you know, maybe we've had this technology before and it mm-hmm. it destroyed us, exactly. you know? I mean, when you think about stuff like sci-fi movies and where does that come from? Is that there's a collective consciousness that exists anyway, you know? So it's like, where are we even getting these ideas from that are so universally like accepted to be, you know, this is, this is what the future would be like. And then, you know, maybe it's all a cycle and all that stuff. It's like, well, are we remembering that deeply? Like, you know, shit's pretty weird, man. I don't really know, but I like Atlantis and I would like to know more about Atlantis because that's, that's really interesting to me. And that's that ancient civilization that like, you know, what happened there? Apparently they, they had a lot of technology and they were kind of running shit, you know? And it's like, well, where did they go? Maybe it wasn't, uh, under sea back in the day. Maybe it was, Mm -hmm. you know, above, above sea and then it became buried or, you know, flooded but uh there's so many obviously who knows but atlantis is very interesting i i think i i i just wonder why we don't put more resources into finding out more about ancient ancient civilizations because there's a lot of maybe maybe they already know man they already know yeah they they already know you know (laughs) and we just we can't know too much just enough because the didn't the uh didn't I don't know, the Pentagon or somebody come out with like, yes, we've been seeing alien spacecraft, but we don't know mm-hmm. what it is. And it's just kind of like, I mean, sure, it could be alien spacecraft, but it could just be like other humans doing things and they don't want us to know about it. Oh, yeah. Like, other humans. I'm pretty sure that, I mean, I just don't, I don't trust that we're given all the information, you know, because it would, it would freak people out too much. Absolutely. And... And it's, you know, it's when Orson Welles went on and he read War of the Worlds, you know, just pandemonium, uh, pandemonium, you know. Was that a Uh, psyop? can't have that. If it wasn't, I mean, they they still got data from it, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. People lost their shit over that. Um, So they would do do the same today. mm -hmm. And maybe, maybe they have. Maybe like these UFO sightings, some of them are just to get us comfortable with the idea, you know, that they're coming or whatever, or they've already been here. Maybe, maybe it's you, man. (laughs) Are the aliens going to be nice (laughs) or are they going to be mean? (laughs) Um, 
I, I, I can't imagine them just wanting to destroy us, right? Like, it seems kind of. Here's my worry. I don't think so either, but given that humans are an apocalypse to ants yeah. or to yeah. like a lot of species on this planet, um, you know, like the worst thing that could happen to you if you're an anthill is seeing a bunch of humans walk towards you, you know, like it's not True. a good thing traditionally. Yeah. So I feel like if there are aliens, they might not even be evil, but they just would mm -hmm. look, at, look at us as like insects. Yeah, for like, sure. Huh, and be like, look at this anthill. Yeah, um, squash. So <laughs> that's my main thing. And that could happen even within with AI coming up. Mm -hmm. AI could have the same view of us. That that stuff really gives me the heebie jeebies. That's a whole different conversation. I'm, <laughs> I'm not I'm not a fan of the robots, dude. Like it's highly you know, interesting to me, but I'm not a fan either. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, there's something really unsettling about that whole thing. I mean, I was obsessed with the Loch Ness monster when I was a kid, like that was my first conspiracy sort of obsession was the Loch Ness monster. And I still want to go there. I want to go there so badly. I want to see Nessie. I hate to break it to you, but that's been sort of debunked as no. whale dick sightings. <laughs> <laughs> no. You they think were, so? Really? I, yeah. I, well, if the internet, if anything on the internet is true and it always <laughs> is, then <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have you know. heard about, Bigfoot possibly being an alien and like an interdimensional traveling being. And that's why they can't find Bigfoot is because Bigfoot can just come and go as he pleases. That's the same as like miracles and like everything, really. If any, if anything's possible, then, then yeah, that's possible. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Crazy I, stuff. I, I chalk it up to, um, you know, I was reading this Gary Paulson book about, about dog sledding and he was mm -hmm. basically he got injured and he was like hanging off this sled and it hit a tree and he broke his leg and he was in minus you know su sub like you know minus 30 degree weather uh, no, most times he would die at that point right like and he yeah. somehow got he, he like this guy came up with you know with a lantern and was like helping him get back on the sled and then and then he rode on the lantern while he was you know heading back on the trail mm -hmm. through the weather through the night he saw you know he was seeing this guy the whole time this little I mean, he was like a small like real small guy but he was Weird. on the on the front of the sled and then the dogs were pulling the sled and he said like and then at some point you know when in the, before first light I look up and he's gone and I never saw him again. You know? Whoa. And, and, you know, and I think a lot of that is just, you're so delirious. You're maybe mm -hmm. sometimes near death. You see things in order to pull you through a situation. So that's another theory that I think sure. could be, you know, uh, yetis up in the, in the, uh, yeah. up in the mountains. And then of course, Bigfoot in the forests. And we can't forget the Kraken. And the Kraken. Yeah. Kraken, so punk rock. <laughs> OG it. punk rocks, and, uh, a and, sea creature. And part of me, you know, my punk rock identity is just I've always, I, you know, I've not necessarily always questioned all authority, you know, because I listen mm -hmm. to what my parents told me to do half the time. But, yeah. uh, you know, just just questioning things when they don't make sense. Sure. That, that's always been, it's come natural to me. Um, I think that's healthy. You know, you should you should question all things really mm -hmm. like and get your brain working like that. You know, just, you know, is this, does, is this based in something like real, you yeah. know? And, um, there's a lot of weird shit that's happened in this world. Like that story you just told, you know, like that guy probably can't like actually explain it, but does he like, like fully believe, you know, what happened and the, that it saved his mm -hmm his life, you know, and was it an angel? Was it a Yeti? Right. The world may never know, you know, but, um, I think having that, um, kind of like curious sort of mind, you know, like, well, I'll allow a miracle in from time to time, mm -hmm. you know, cause it's like, also it's like that same thing, getting ready to go on stage, like putting your, your mind in a place where it's like, you're open to having these experiences and, you know, transcending, and, you know, kind of like, this, what is this, a space-time continuum? We, like, where did I go just now? 
Um, and I, you know, I've had something as simple as like a, a nice chill meditation on the rock by the river that I go and I hike by, you know, where it's like, you know, that kind of magical stuff. It's, it's all around us, but you have to be like open to it. Uh, maybe I'm learning something because uh, there's another Gary Paulson book called The Island, and it's all about mm-hmm. this kid spending time on the island and realizing, like, if he, like, almost doesn't move or anything, then these animals just start doing what they normally would do if you're not around. And you see so much more. Yeah. And, you know, another That's cool. Another great book, uh, The Alchemist by Paulo, Paulo Coelho. I, I love think. that one. Uh, just, yeah. Yeah, just, just learning about omens and looking for omens mm-hmm. and seeing meaning in, in – and, you know, obviously you have to take a chance. You have to go out. Like you were saying, you you take chances and you – calculated risk I think was what you said yeah but, uh, it's so most of the time people when people are successful they've taken risks you know calculated or not and and uh-huh. I don't want to sit here and tell people go and take risk like don't you know mm-hmm. do you you know but yeah yeah but that's what I see honestly and and mm-hmm. we wouldn't I wouldn't be right here today if I hadn't taken risks and and I assume, oh totally yeah yeah and you have to like believe in yourself to a degree too right like because if you don't if, if you, you're not buying your own shit nobody else is going to <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like um right yeah so it's like yeah life is life is life is such a trip we really do get to i think we have a part in how it turns out for us mm-hmm. you know but um what do they say fortune favors the bold that's a big one for me right now you know and um, I'm in a I'm, I'm in a place I've always wanted to be right now, where I've got the best band I've ever played with, I've got an incredible record label that supports me. You know, I'm doing what I want to be doing, and good things are coming my way. You know, and it's like, holy shit, is this it? And then I have to remember, no, because <laughs> this is a long distance race. You know, and uh, you have to just stay your course. And I'm I'm really focused on like what, uh, what this is going to look like 40 years from now. Like I want to, I want to have enough music that's been out that like I've contributed to punk rock as a whole and, you know, done something good for the, the scene that I love and believe in and, and, you know, helped me grow up and into this woman, you know, and we just played a bunch of shows with Teenage Bottle Rocket that were all ages. And I hadn't gotten to do a lot of that, um, previously because you know people love to throw punk bands in bars so <laughs> that that happens often you know but um at a couple of these shows there were these teenage girls who were just like losing their shit and i hadn't really like considered like oh wait a minute remember when when little susie was 13 14 watching brody and the distillers and being like, holy fuck, that's the first time I've ever seen a girl do that thing that I want to do. You know, like I hadn't even thought about how important it is that I do what I'm doing so other girls do it too, you know, and um, to give them somebody, you know, to look up to that like rocks really hard with a guitar, you know, it's like we love Joan Jett, but like, it's not just, there's gotta be more than that. <laughs> you know, yes. there are so many women who play music and, um, I take it, it, it's a responsibility that I have and I've been given a lot of really great opportunities. So like, I want to, I want to do really good work and, and help the scene. I want to help the kids. I want to be a force of positivity and, hopefully inspire them because we we need all of those kids to start bands like right now (laughs) well said i love that and and we definitely need more and more women in punk rock and music in general but um you know i always say like not enough women call call in the podcast you know because it's just like i heard that they're out there but (laughs) not enough call uh so be bold fortune favors the bold and the brave yeah Um, speak up for that's yourself, right. you so, hot little so, things. Absolutely. Tell us about the new record, uh, when it's coming out, if you have a date. Do you, if, you, if you don't, then we'll just move on and talk about tour. Well, now. you and I have so many people that connect us. Um, you know, Lisa Johnson is one of my best friends oh, yeah, in the whole that. world. Yeah, she's like my big sister. Like Lisa's been my adopted big sister for 15 years, you know, and well, I was texting with her about being on your show and 
um, Ryan Seaman you had on your show. Ryan and I have been the homies since we were 16, little kids in bands. You know, you had Davey Warsop on your show. And Davey actually produced my full length that is coming out. I don't have a street date yet because another guest that you had, Master Eugenie, who is mixing and mastering my full length, he just sent me the sequencing for the record two mornings ago. So um, it is it is totally done and it's coming. Uh, but actually, when I get off the phone with you, I have a conference call with Pirates Press Records and we're going to talk about release strategy because they are they've just heard the the record for the first time like yesterday. So all this stuff yeah. is happening right now. But Mike, um again, the universe bringing me awesome gifts um in the last couple of days like three really awesome things have come to me and I can't announce them yet but like back to back to back like one particular thing that if if it comes through it's going to be like a milestone career bucket list. I screamed in the van when I heard about the offer, like screamed. Um, so that thing, you know, if it's meant to be, it'll be. And then a couple other big events that we're going to be a part of, you know, and I'm just so super duper grateful for all these incredible people in my life um, because it takes a village. I'm just one, I'm just one person, you know, and without, uh, these people that are helping me and encouraging me and supporting me and are part of the crew, you know, I, I can't do this at all. So I just feel totally blessed and thankful to all those people. So a street date for the new record will be coming soon, but it's not quite there yet. And um, I've definitely got a case of tour scurvy that's coming in. I don't know if you can hear it in my voice. So okay. I'm just going to go back to bed yeah. after all of this stuff. Like Absolutely. that's my plan for the day. Wow. Wow. Cool. Thank you so yeah. much for your time. That, that sounds cool. Uh, come back on what, you know, oh, and, yeah. and update us maybe next year or something, but, uh, or late in the year, you can, you know, but I sure. uh, would love to have you back. Um, I'd like that. I, I love everything you're doing. Keep it up. It sounds like you're definitely keeping it up. So, um, thank you. Where can people find you real quick? Well, on Instagram, I'm the Susie Moon and I run all the social media pages for the band. So if somebody wants to write me a message, like I will get back to you. I always do. Um, there's also susiemoon.com, which is basically just a home for ticket links mm -hmm. for the tour. So if somebody is like, oh, how do I get tickets to that show? Go to susiemoon.com and I've got tour posters, you know, all that stuff. Um, all the dates are there. And we're like, we're just cruising up to the middle of this full U.S. tour. So um, there are still dates ahead and mm -hmm. you should check it out because we are we are having a blast on this tour. And it's really cool to go to a lot of these places for the first time with this band. So we're, we're out there making new friends, new memories. And um, yeah, just come out and hang with us because um, we, we want to meet people and, you know, um, have great shows and share that experience with other people. Absolutely. I, you know, I can attest, I saw the show with Teenage Bottle Rocket in Bremerton. It was excellent. So anybody out fun. there that's want to check it out, it's worth it. Hell yeah. Come on down, everybody. Endorsed by me. Birds aren't real. I approve of this message. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'll let you go. Go get some rest. Well, do your deals. Mike, you rule. Then get some rest. Thank you so much, Susie. Dude, thank you for taking some time to chat with me. You're awesome, dude. Thank you. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.